Hello, ladies, gentlemen, and Gothamites. It is I, Emily Sophia, here to break down for you guys yet another episode of the first season of Gotham. So, spoiler alert, as we dive into the mad, mad, mad thick of things, as I will be bearing all in this review, and without further ado, let's get into it, okay? So, first of all, I would love to thank all of you who are watching this vlog right now for sticking with this show with me, because I know that a lot of people dropped off the face of the earth with it due to a lack of confidence or investment in the material, and I do understand that, but you see, I am about as stubborn as a certain Oswald Cobblepot when it comes to following through with things, I suppose. Um, and so I have, I am determined to get through this first season and to enjoy as much as I possibly can. And really, I'm I'm very much enjoying the um, the second half of this first season. I feel like the writers have really hit a certain stride in general. There's still much weirdness to be had, but I think that that's something that I can kind of get used to and jive with. And you know, I try to go into stuff looking for things to to enjoy and so it's really hard for me to to knock a show until until I'm way far in and I could see everything for what it is the kaleidoscope as it were but anyway so talking about this episode this was quite an interesting change of pace for a lot of characters but again we see kind of like we did last week that that there's this certain status quo that all of the characters are inevitably drawn to and so and so even though even though we see characters flirting with death or characters who we think you know we think that their time has come but just ain't so and i mean we know that that's the case for the penguin of course he's going to be in it for the long haul he's one of the main appeals of the show in lieu of having an actual batman figure They've really got to play up, play up their assets, play up their their big key, their big key uh, powerhouses, of which uh, the penguin is one of them. That's for sure. So uh, first of all, I need to discuss the crap is Fish Mooney's deal. Like, what what is her life? What exactly is is going on with her? So she's going on a vacation, and she sends a uh, Salmaroni. A little ringling, letting him know that, as he apparently did not previously know, that the penguin was a traitor and a traitor from the very start, which I thought that he had to have known. And so that's a little bit baffling to me. I mean, come on, come on, Sal. You are your detective Angel Batista in Dexter. And you couldn't have puzzled that out? I mean, then again, you had a friggin' serial killer right under your nose for eight seasons, so I guess it makes sense. But nonetheless, nonetheless, I'm I'm a little embarrassed for you and not at all sad or sorry because how could you not? How could you not? Anyway, so Fish drops a little, little line and then she takes off on her, on her pleasure cruise, as it were, until the very last, like, it was a weird, super fast 15 second scene at the very, very end of the episode. Everything else kind of seems to be resolved. And then she's lounging in her, in her luxury suite. Here's a bunch of shots go off. Guy strolls up into her room and then they get down and freaking lock eyes like Pokemon in a duel. It's like when they look at each other, they have to go, you know, there's no, no guns, no nothing. They just straight up like visceral, guttural animal growls and they race at each other as in what? <laughs> From where did this come? From what previous life do these two uh, know each other? Um, hmm. Fish has got that eye, eye of the tiger. And uh, we're gonna hear her roar, maybe? I don't know, I don't know. It's weird, it's a really weird note to end off on because I totally thought that the episode was done and then there's just this like, <laughs> right, right there at the end. I, I cannot comprehend um, Fish Mooney. 
things are getting a little bit loony with her, but, um, and we, we definitely got to see Penguin in, in Dire Straits, so at, at last he has truly made an enemy of Moroni. I mean, he's got all the right friends in the right places and the wrong, so he's got, he's got power players everywhere, and the question is, when is the clock going to run out on his, on his connection with Falcone, you know, because inevitably he's, he's really not in this to, in this to make or keep friends besides apparently Jim Gordon, which I, I kind of enjoy their, their little bond together. And I, I think that that's something that could, you know, withstand a lot of insanity because it continues to be a thing even after all that's transpired they just keep coming back to each other true bromance uh up in gotham over here but anyway so <laughs> the whole oh man moroni is just so he's just really not menacing he's a goofy guy he's a goofy guy and is it just me, or do, does, like, the gap between David Zayas's front teeth seem to have exponentially increased? Has, like, they've, like, opened up, like, the parting of the Red Sea? I just, I don't even know. I don't even know. But he's really a comical villain character because he's so bungling and inept, even compared to someone like the Penguin who walks like a freaking penguin, which... They are not known for their grace, um, from, from what I understand. Um, but yeah, so, and of course, I love that as they, they send him away in the car to get, to get smashed and packaged into a crumpled up little sardine in, uh, in the junkyard, they leave his phone on him, so he is calling everybody. He is in the cash cab. He has got, he has got them thousands on the line and he is calling all his friends to get the answers, you know? And so finally he's able to tug at the heartstrings of the, the operator of the machine and he shimmies on out of there as he so often does. And like Fish Mooney ends up on the outskirts of town, but unlike Fish, he is ready to go right back to Gotham and get back to business. Because clearly he was trying to conduct business up to the very last moment. Um, but yeah. So, explosive things are still due to come in the mob wars, I am sure. I'll be interested to see kind of how Falcone is uh, is dealing with, with everything. And then getting to see the penguin uh, <laughs> get bussed back to Gotham with the church ladies. Hallelujah. That was that was a fabulous moment. I was feeling mighty glorious. Glorious up in there. Um, what else? I mean, a lot happened this week. We had the introduction of the Scarecrow. If you blink, you might have missed it. So, think pool scene. We've got Todd Crane. So, Todd Crane is the father of Jonathan Crane. We'll go back to Jonathan Crane in a minute. Todd Crane is the guy who is part of this phobia support group who uses the fears of, of the um, anonymous, anonymous group members and turns them on these, on these poor unsuspecting people and, and murders them as soon as they are as afraid as they can possibly be is when he, he ends their life and that is kind of his, his glorious victory over, over them, whatever. Um, so when he's he's in the pool um, with uh, la, 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 Harvey's pseudo girlfriend, um, and then that scrawny, tall, shaggy, long-haired emo-looking kid strolls up. Jonathan Crane is indeed the young scarecrow. Okay, so there are I don't know how many different origin stories in the comics there are for the Scarecrow. I know that the one after like the 1980s Crisis on Infinite Earths uh, DC reboot, I think in the late 80s they kind of crafted his origin story such that as a child, Jonathan Crane was deathly afraid of bats and was also bullied. 
had a carry moment where he freaks out on everyone after sustaining all this abuse and he covers his head and he sh has a school shooting and I mean it's all really really dark stuff and yeah and so he kind of he kind of embarks on this reign of terror and yet is still able to pursue an education become a psychologist professor at a university counselor <laughs> so to speak and he decides to uh, pursue the life of a career criminal using um, using psychotic drugs and things of not happiness. I mean, if you guys have seen Batman Begins, you have a, a little glimpse into into the character of the Scarecrow, who has been dealt with very interestingly in the comics and video games. And there's a lot of different manifestations of his character and how how he works. Um, so it appears to me that next week we are going to see, um, we're going to see Jonathan Crane and what his fears in this show, in this corner of the universe are. And it appears that he is afraid of scarecrows. And thusly, I'm starting to see the pattern that that which you are afraid of is that which you become. Getting a little, little deep up in here but uh yeah so interesting little tidbit there and his father is still in the picture which i don't know much about the role of todd crane in the comics and how his his father might have influenced um the path that that jonathan took but yeah clearly there's there's a lot of a lot of avenues for this troubled young man to pursue full-time villainy which I'm sure that is going to happen. He's a wee bit older than Bruce, but we also get some developments um, on Bruce's end as well. Um, so, and, and you know, I think it's good that we don't see him every week because it is so difficult to keep him from just becoming Batman. <laughs> I mean, it's, I mean, at, at this point, Alfred is closer to being Batman than Bruce is, but which I wouldn't mind. Personally, I think I think that would be a fantastic twist. And I think that Alfred is so completely beyond qualified for that business, but he looks too good in a suit. Too good. Anyway, so, after getting his heart broken into pieces by Cat Kid, he decides that it is time to abandon the uh, pursuit of his parents' killer through the method of the law. And he takes the law into his own hands, you know? I think at one point, though, didn't Gordon say that, like, he was the law? You know, everybody's kind of trying to be the law in Gotham. And I think that that is one of the, the city's um, central issues, is that is that there are a lot of people that are trying to embody what they believe should be the social order and way of things. And so... That's a little food for thought, you know, there's lots of different ways to analyze what exactly is wrong with Gotham. There's really no wrong answer, I think, but, you know, that is something to consider. Anyway, so he releases Gordon from, from his promise to apprehend the killer. Gordon's got a wee bit much on his plate right now. And they're also at a wee slight loss of uh, evidence at this point, but... It seems like they're really trying to construct this potentially multi-season arc about about um, pinpointing the the killer of Bruce's parents. So I guess we'll see what they want to do with that. Exactly, Selena's kind of you know rip roaring around. I don't really know what I think about what she's up to at this point, except that I am proud of her for stealing Barbara's jewels. Thank you very much. And I am just, I am really concerned for the imminent return of Barbara because the writers have still done nothing to endear her character to us. The only thing they can do to make us feel better is to not show her, which is what they have done. But we know that that's not going to be forever, and I just don't know exactly how they're going to bring her back in. Especially as things seem to be going pretty well between Jimmy John and uh, Leslie Tompkins as well. <laughs> They've, <laughs> there was one scene I busted up. I lost myself in this moment when they were going out on their dinner date. Gordon gets called out. He's like, I've got to go or whatever he says. And then 
all she says, I mean, just the straight dialogue immediately coming off of him saying that he has to go, she's like, I'm fine. <laughs> just like, oh, because I, I wasn't, I wasn't concerned in the slightest. <laughs> like, oh man, that rocky road to love. I, I tell you what, but hey, brunettes are better. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Anyway, so forget I said that. Uh, that's mean and completely unfounded, and I'm very biased. But, um, anyways, so that is a cute thing. Not Barbara is a great choice for Gordon, I think. And Leslie really seems to, she seems to be able to jive with him pretty well. They both work in these very disturbing and, and graphic and intense environments. Uh, environments her at. Arkham Asylum, although she might be transferring back to, or um, transferring to the GCPD. And then, of course, Gordon is back at the GCPD. And so, career-wise, their lives have kind of intertwined a bit, and she has, she has a good sense of humor about things. And I think it's good for Gordon, too, to have a, to have a lady who's sort of in this line of work, because even though we know that's going to mean that she's going to be put in danger um, in some way. I mean, so was, so was Barbara, you know. Um, but at least, at least there's a sense of she understands the nature of, of his work. And so really, I think for her, it's going to be cracking the code of who Gordon is instead of trying to, to spill all of his juicy work details to the world to, for whatever godforsaken reason, which is what Barbara did incessantly and pretty much ruined me for life. <coughs> anyway, so that is good. Um, I'm continuing to really enjoy Harvey. He makes, he makes me giggle. Um, what are other things? There's totally other things that I'm forgetting. Enigma. Duh. Yes, that is exactly what we need to talk about. So with Enigma, Again, it's one of those plots where you think that maybe everything is going to change and this character might be out of the picture, kind of on the periphery or somewhere else completely for a while, but he ends up turning right back around. I don't even know if he left the building by the time that um, his, his little gift in the locker room um, was opened. That was a very... What did that remind me of? It, re it reminded me of season one of Dexter with... Um, with uh, Brian Moser and limbs and things of that nature. That, that's what it reminded me of, I think. But there was lots of uh, corpse things going on in this episode. <laughs> lots of uh, hands being where they should not be. And um, yeah, I think it was really cute at the end on the lighter notes. When, when Gordon goes in for his passionate kiss with Leslie and Edward, Ed, he sees it and then he goes in to Miss Kringle and he, it, it's almost like he makes the connection like there's a kiss happening, I'm gonna go make my kiss happen, but you know, basically the closest that he gets to that is he gets to give Miss Kringle a new pencil. New beginnings, young love, and what else? Yeah, but it's, it's so funny because every time that something something goes wrong for, for Enigma, I'm just like, all right, and the killer origin story begins now. <laughs> and I'm just waiting for it, but I know there, there's going to be a lot of false starts because they've got to take their time with this business, which is what makes Gotham such an interesting adventure is that they, they have to really get creative and original in the ways that they develop these characters because they can't simply revert to making them who they're going to be in the long run because then they don't really have much more than a mini series, you know? And I imagine that they want to make this thing go as long as possible, which I think they can do if they're smart about it. So if there's anything else that I forgot to talk about, you guys are more than free to bring them up in the comments. Now this is a big week, you guys. February 8th, we've got the back-to-back -back premiere of The Walking Dead and Better Call Saul, both of which I am going to be reviewing on this channel. I have no idea when I'm going to be able to get the reviews up for those because I'm going to have to make them one after the other, and I work Monday mornings, and it's going to be a little bit of a clusterfuck, but I'm going to figure it out. 
And then I know that Better Call Saul is going to be on, is that going to be moving to Mondays or Tuesdays? Things are going to stack up and it's going to get weird, but I, I want to do it. I'm ready for it. It's, it's going to be exciting. So thank you guys so much for watching this. I hope that you'll stick around for my future reviews of other shows and Gotham. And we'll just have lots of happy good times. So you guys, you guys take care. Fill in any blanks that I left below. And as always, I will see you. Oh, I almost used another <laughs> YouTuber's sign off. That's no good. I was going to say, I will be back before you know it. <laughs>